I'm Michael Lopez and today's video is the second video on the ARP spoofing and I threw in some uh, Python uh, PyCharm installation and um, other stuff that you know the book doesn't really tell you like github repository and stuff so enjoy all right so where did we leave off so in the last video we left off um right here and uh we checked the mac address to make sure that this was working so we, we verified one two and all these so um that was working now we're here so um let's get going i don't want this video to be, to be too long but i still want to go through stuff and see how far we can get through this ARP spoofing uh, chapter. So, um, as you can see, my Metasploit is still running, Kali's running, PFSense is running. So, this begins. So, the, rain, the remaining section, ARP reply. Okay, so we already did this part. All right. So you must also trick the router into believing you're the victim so that you can intercept incoming traffic on the victim's behalf. Open a new term terminal and run the command that follows. Notice the router IP and the victim's IP are now reversed. This is because you're now generating packets to trick the router into believing you're the victim. So let's go ahead and run this one and see what happens. So let's pull up the um, Kali box. <clears throat> Kali. Kali. And let's go to open up a let's see what let's go to the room we might have to do these um do the first one over again. Come on. Okay, we're in root. Let's see what commands we have here. Okay, let's run this one again. Let's make sure that it's right. All right, we're going to run that one again. Okay, so that looks like it's running. And it doesn't say how long it let this run for. Does it? I don't remember. Let's give it, let's see what happens if we just leave it, let it run. All right, let's get out of that. Let's now let's run it backwards. So it's telling us to uh, where's my numlock? Hmm. 
run it backwards as well. Yeah, we're going to let that run. It looks like it's running backwards as well. And notice that it's replying from 100 now instead of 1. And I'm going to stop that. I want to see if that says, you know, run it. Uh, okay. Let's see what it says. Okay, notice the router. Okay, notice. This is because you are now generating packets to trick the router into believing you're the victim. Now that you've spoofed the victim's router, what can you do? with the intercepted packets. Let's inspect the packets we've intercepted and extract URLs from them. This will allow us to generate a list of websites that the victim visits. And then that could be a bank website, that could be his or her um, um, uh, any kind of mortgage website, pay their mortgage, you know, anything. Uh, credit cards. Okay. Extract the URLs by returning the following command in the new terminal. Okay, hold up. No, 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 no. Okay, URL, URL, URLs, NARF. Ethel. So remember, this has got to be the one. So let's go back. And this isn't it. Wants it in a new. Oh, so you got to keep that running, I think. I don't know. We're about to find out. Why does it say open in a new terminal? Because you got to keep that running. So this is just setting up a listener. Oh, that's why you had to open it up in a new terminal. Okay. S URLs NARF, huh? All right. You can also generate some internet traffic on the victim's machine. Log into Metasploitable Virtual Machine using MSF admin for both the username and password, and then enter in the following command to generate the web request to google.com. Okay. Figure two five shows an overview of what's occurring in this step. Ha ha ha. Tricked you into believing I am the router. Now I can see your web traffic. So this is me, I'm the hacker. I tricked the metasploitable server. Or wait a minute. I tricked the router. That now I can see your traffic. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, metasploitable. Yeah, so no, we tricked the metasploitable server 
into thinking that we're the we're the firewall pf sense router or firewall so then now it's sending us the information first so that's why there's a line here and we can see their uh now i can see your web traffic we see it and then we send it to the router or the the real router and the firewall right that's what's happening if you've done everything correctly the url associated with the web request will show up in the terminal after a couple minutes be patient it takes time to parse the packets so remember when we ran this we should see get we should see what exactly what they looked at so let's try that okay let's go in here and we got to enter a w get and w get you got to google that that's a command that um gets internet url addresses right or you can get stuff from the url you can download stuff and stuff like that but i guess this one right here is just getting the website um so let's go into our metasploitable since we're we're already hacked into it and let's we're already logged in, so let's w get stuff. So this is same w get http. So we're listening on this guy's um on this guy's uh server, right? Or wherever this is. Or this is our victims. The heck am I doing? So what we're doing is we're now I'm into okay, so it says it's W get HTTP resolving Google connecting to Google.com connected. Okay. So that means that now I am connected it's google.com anyways so we did what the book says now let's see so this would be like the victim he's searching the internet right and we want to intercept it first we you know so here on that listening um command we set up it should show up right here there and there it is see it didn't take that long so URL snarf listening on ETH1 TCP port whatever right now this is why th these ports here TCP port 80 uh, TC, uh, or port 8080 or port it's listening on these ports to see what traffic um, the Oh, wait, it's just listening on this. Well, I don't know. Anyways, it picked up. Uh, it picked up his what what our victim is trying to. Um, did the W get Google dot com Google dot com. See, not saying it's listening on this um, network. OK, and that's what it's that's what it's showing here on eth1 so that's why it has like the ip address here so this ip but wait a minute 100 was that 100 was our firewall right so but <laughs> so all right so let's look and Okay, hold on. Victims IP. So the firewall is the literal one. Yeah, so it's f from the victim's IP. Let's try to figure this out. So it's saying from the victim's IP, this is actually showing us the IP of the victim. Um, and the time that 
they try to do get google.com and I guess you have to write do that get but if I if it was like a desktop I'm sure whatever he's surfing or whatever he's looking at it would have showed so let's go let's see if they ask us to do some more stuff so that worked that's awesome let's go ask see if they ask us to do some more stuff here if you've done everything right yeah yeah, yeah. pseudo euro pseudo euro stuff so this is what we got that's exactly what we got so that worked okay take a look at at this output although we're showing only euro here the attacking machine is capturing all of the packets the victim sends and receives from the internet this means that the attacker can see un unencrypted information the victim sends over the network it also means an attacker can modify packets to inject malicious code into the machine once you done once you're done performing your malicious action don't leave the ARP table in in the corrupted state after the attacker leaves the coffee shop the victim will no longer be able to connect to the internet and they'll suspect foul play you must restore the ARP tables to the original configuration before shutting down the attack thankfully ARP spoof does this for us Shut down the attack by pressing Control C in both terminals running ARP spoof. Protecting yourself against ARP spoofing. And it was that it. Although it's difficult to prevent an ARP spoofing attack, encrypting your internet traffic helps protect your information from being stolen or modified. Any traffic sent over HTTPS connection is encrypted. However, manually checking to ensure every URL you visit is HTTPS is tedious. So the Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF.org, has created a web browser extension for Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and Opera <coughs> called HTTPS Everywhere that ensures that all your web traffic goes over HTTPS connection. Installing the plugins is a great way to protect yourself. And see, this is what I was talking about. Um, the, if computers or laptops are not protected, you know, like this is the type of stuff you can do. That's awesome to know. Um, we all know that HTTP is not protected. HTTPS is. And so, <clears throat> um, I mean, that's one way to protect yourself, right? Let's see if... Now this one goes into detecting an ARP spoofing attack. Let's go and do what they said. They said to shut down the uh, um, control C. And then this one was already stopped. But maybe this one had to have been running. Mm, 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 mm. Anyways, it worked either way. So, control C that. Now let's go to the next thing. Detecting an ARP spoof attack. In this section, we'll write a Python program to historic to heuristically detect an ARP spoofing attack. We'll bring our own ARP table using a dictionary and then check to see whether the packets we received has changed any entry. We'll assume that any packet that changes the state of our table is malicious. We'll begin by selecting a library that can both intercept a parse intercept and parse the packets that pass through your NIC. <clears throat> Scappy is a popular Python package that allows you to read and send packets. Scappy. Before you use Scappy, you'll need to install it with a pipe with a pip3. Use the following command to both get pip to both get to get both pip3 and Scappy. Okay, we're gonna do this because this is awesome. So. Um, 
when you're trying to download a uh, what happened to those other ones? Oh, oh wait, root. Let's close this root. We don't need it no more. Let's close that root. Um. So sudo. We'll go to sudo app get install python three pip. So um, we already know about app get that gets apps install installs it right sudo is your root sudo whatever we'll call it sudo because i don't care um install python 3 pip so in python 3 they have a they have a function called pip that allows you to download python 3 or any kind of <clears throat> um libraries and stuff straight from python right using that PIP uh, command okay and so you're always gonna deal with um, you know the PIP with Python Python and then um, app get install installs your programs right so that looked like it worked now I have uh, Python 3 I think let's go here and let's go to uh, PIP 3 install Scappy. So now we're gonna install Scappy, right? So three install P I P three install. Pre. Pre. Scappy. Basic. I'm just gonna put. Oh man, what happened? I'm just gonna put a scabby. I think I don't know if you got to put that basic. Remember, I didn't. I don't remember what the book said. Uh, if that was, but I'm just gonna put pre scabby and see what happens, right? Yeah. See. So. Oh, so I already got scabby. Okay, we're defaulting to user installation because normal. Oh, you have to put sudo. But it says that it's already installed. All right, so it says it's already it's already satisfied. Skeppy is in my. This one said it too. So Skeppy's already. Warning, running a pip in root can result in broken permissions. Oh, I didn't know that. All right. So that's already done. We've got about four more minutes on this. I don't want to make a long video, but... Okay, once you've installed Scappy, you can import the Sniff library, which allows you to capture, allows us to capture and inspect the packets that pass through our NIC. Copy and paste the following Python program, arp directory.py. Into mousepad or a code editor of your choice to start mousepad, run mousepad. <laughs> Can I copy and paste this? I can't. Oh, art director dot pi. So what I recommend is you write this code out yourself. Um, and I've got um, PyCharm, I think. Well, no, this is a new Kali Linux box. So it says put it in mouse pad, right? Let's go see if we can find mouse pad. I don't think I've ever used it. Well, it's not that I don't think I've ever used it. So let's 
so I I don't remember using mouse pad. There's a mouse pad right there, right? And um let's see. Once you've installed, you can import the sniff library. So this is what this sniff from Scapio import. So if you don't know how to use Python, um, take some classes and learn. You know, I, I'm, I'm probably gonna make another video on the Python, uh, gray hat Python or black hat Python. Um, or you could take a read a book in Python, learn how to do it. Python's not really complicated. It was made to teach um, people how to program the easiest way, like for children, and teens, and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> I would say I might skip this. So this might be one thing I'm going to skip because, you know, uh, this is something I probably would do on my own, like detecting ARP spoofing attack is an invaluable skill. But um, I think that it, you know, doing all this, okay, I think is um, basically you're running into programming into Python. And you're going to use Python probably a lot in hacking, um, especially if you're writing your own scanning you know if you're writing your own uh tools or whatnot um but i think that we're gonna skip this one okay now this might be one we're gonna skip and if you want to go back to it right you can um So it says copy and paste, but I can't copy and paste from my book. And you guys can't obviously copy and paste. But what I would do is I would just type all this in. But then if when I got to type it in, I got to run it to see if it's working. Um, I don't think I have a uh, pie charm on my Kellen Linux. You know, but they, they always... Um... You can run this see <clears throat> it's saying run you know this is how you run the program right so they did it in the notepad they put it in the directory and then they want you to run it right so sudo python3 rpredictor.py that runs the the application this application right they want you to name it that they want you to uh put it somewhere and they want you to run it um man. so but what, what I would do is I wouldn't run it on mouse pad. I mean, that's whack, right? Because mouse pad, I've never used mouse pad, right? It might be all right, but I think it sucks. Like I would use um, something else. So let's just look at this and see what we can use. So I wouldn't use mouse pad. That's whack. Um, let's see if they have pie charm. So pie charm. So they don't have PyCharm. Let's see if they have um, um, oh, visual. Nothing visual. Visual. That's why they have you use PyCharm because it's not installed here. So I think what I'm going to do is, okay, is I'm going to install something a little bit better on this Kali block box. And... I'm going to come back and do that. That way it's easier. I think I'm going to install PyCharm. So, let's see if I let's see if I even can. So So I can go here and just write type in PyCharm to see what it, see if that works. So this is what I would do. Let me let me let's just play with this because this is pretty interesting. So let's I 
got 20 more seconds. Let's, um, let's do a little bit more of this video and then I'll move on. Let's see. Um, Google. And I'll show you guys how, how, how I look this up. All right, let's see uh, how to install I charm on Linux. And I guess let's look at this. Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can download and install PyCharm on your Ubuntu operator if you are using the late hyphen hyphen version, right? So you can see I have at the time of making this video, Python 3.8. All right, and we know what version ours is, so Python 3 version. So I, I know, let's see, let's go to ours and see what Python version we have. And I think it's uh that's scrappy. Um, it says it's version. I can't I have no patience. So Python 3 version. What did I put? The heck did I put? Oh, pfft. I spelled Python wrong. Man. Okay, so I got Python 3.10.5. Okay, let's go. 5, which means I can install PyCharm on my Ubuntu operating system. So before installing PyCharm, we need to uh, see which version is the latest version at the time of making this video. So just open your favorite browser and... Yeah, this is on Ubuntu. Gosh. That was the wrong video. Hello everyone, welcome. I mean, I probably could have did it on that one too, but. Encryption, the tech, Kali Linux. Here I am in my Kali Linux. So to install the Python, uh, we need to download the software first. So for that, I open a browser uh, that is Firefox. Here in the Google search engine, I search for Python download. Python is from JetBrains. So I just click on download Python item id for professional developers as we are using linux i just click on community edition of forever for your life for learning python programming time depending of the folder icon all right so i guess you got okay, to do it's it been extracted online. and we can see a directory pycham dash community dash 2020 dot one just double click on it it uh, right click on this bin folder and click on open terminal here it just maximize the font size with control shift plus plus uh, listing the directory uh, we can see the files of python here we can see python.ss this is the best executable file to install python in your kali box so just run it uh, like dot forward slash and then pycharm dot s s it will install the software for you click on i confirm that i have read and accept the terms of this user agreement click on continue 
you can just click on don't send just click on skip remaining and say defaults okay it's installed now you can uh, set the right and i think we heard enough of that so let's get on here let's go here Charm. Jet brains. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we, <coughs> we downloaded PyCharm for the community edition because it's free. <clears throat> we want to save the file, right? So now PyCharm community, your tar, tar file, tar ball. So um, this is actually pretty cool too on showing you what steps you have to do to download something um this is pretty uh, valuable as well so we're gonna we're gonna show you how to um you know you got to kind of think about things you know so why use mousepad uh to do a quick you know um <clears throat> little script that you're gonna write for for python when you can use pycharm now pycharm you, you guys are in, you know, cybersecurity, whatever. You guys know what it is. And, uh, but if you're beginning, you're getting into cybersecurity or whatnot, Parm Charm is um, basically a um, IED, I would say, um, that you can, where you can uh, develop uh, Python code and all kinds of other code, I think, with different um, extensions. <clears throat> you can, can develop it and, it actually works great because it tells you what you're doing wrong um it has different colors for for stuff to show you if you're doing it wrong or right and so it's better than mouse pad okay and if you're gonna be i got a feeling we're gonna be um doing a lot of python scripts so i, I said i want to skip it but I was only going to skip it because I wanted to do all this probably off camera, but I'm going to show you guys all this on camera, right? And how, and how I go about, um, figuring things out, right? And that's what my channel is about. So <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and, um, um, show you. So, so in Kali Linux, Okay, so Kali Linux is its own hacker's toolkit, right? So this is what Kali Linux is. Okay, now Ubuntu and all that other stuff is is like a, 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 a Cal or it's like a it's a Linux um, um, operating system, but it can be anything. It can be a virtual machine, just like running that. It can, it can, it can be your laptop. It can, it's it's an operating system, right? Well, Kali Linux um, is its own little tool for hacking and stuff like that, right? So <clears throat> when you're looking up you know how to how, i mean you could have downloaded it the same way but i'm sure not okay um because it's all linux right but um you're gonna want to look up kali linux right you know hey how do i do this in kali linux and then that's that video that second video i got was was more accurate right so pycharm i guess yeah you had to get the download and then you come over here to your um to your downloads and so there's a file up here Oh, wait, uh, home, right? Uh, there's downloads here, and here it is, right? And this is going to come in a, you have to extract this. So it would be the equivalent of downloading something from Windows 
if you use Windows a lot, right? And and getting the Windows <clears throat> zip file folder. That's basically this, that's what I think it is, right? <clears throat> so we're gonna extract here. Like in that video said, said to extract it. So we're just gonna extract it there. I don't have my own little folders yet or anything. Like I said, this is a new um a new um v uh, box new vm cali linux box so i just i just downloaded it <clears throat> and so i don't have any anything uh um files or anything specific for for anything in it yet so um i said this video wasn't going to be long but it might be a little bit long okay so now this is the one he said go to bin um yeah because it's a folder so we're gonna go to bin and he said run the wait no he said open it in so you can right click this and you can open in uh terminal right so that's what's cool about well i guess i don't know if you could do that in windows so it took me to downloads pycharm community and then bin right so it took me in there and he said you know you want to do an ls to see the files in there and pycharm sh is what he wants what he said to run so we're gonna go like this and we're gonna right click and copy selection that's the easiest way for me i don't know and now we're going to run that so you're gonna press dot slash uh, right so it looks like it's okay there you go so now it's running PyCharm okay so now it's that's you know in in um, Linux it's heavily command based so this is how you would do it in, in Linux like in, in Windows and stuff you just click on it click on the execution file double click on it <clears throat> right and here it is and then when you want to open it so I think what I would do is I would do this uh, eh, not there but um let's do a new project so home Cali PyCharm projects Python project. Okay. Create script. Create. So now, um, <clears throat> we can create, and you can want, and if you don't know how to use PyCharm, it's not that hard. Like I'm not gonna go through any crazy uh, advanced stuff in PyCharm. I'm just gonna do simple scripts and run them. Uh, and stuff like that. Okay. And so, like I said, this is going to be way better for, see the different colors and stuff. This is going to be way better for um, writing Python script, right? And I can save this main pie and call it um, what what the heck was it supposed to be called? Uh, it's called arp arp with the big D, okay? <laughs> arp detector with big D. I um <clears throat> so that's what we're gonna call it, right? Arp detector and the dot, dot pi is already there that means it's a python program right and that's going to be in home cali this is important right pycharm projects python project okay so it makes its own little folder so now when you want to run that you got to go to that directory and you got to run this okay so now we're going to minimize this right and if I close this, I think it's going to close out of that pie charm. It did. But I can come here and I can type in pie charm now, right? 
Maybe it should. No. Nope. Maybe not. Recently used. Yeah, it's not gonna be in here, right? It's gonna be in here. And here's a quick. guy says right here obviously I didn't down I didn't it just opened it or some let's see so to get desktop icon so just click on configure and then uh, click on get desktop entry just uh, check on this checkbox and click on ok no, that's it's all done just close this and close this terminal as well. Okay, so that's so I guess that desktop entry will start it every time. God, I hate myself. That's the only thing I hate about this. Using Windows and then using uh, going to Linux. Desktop entry. I don't see no desktop entry. Oh, there it is. So now it's showing because I'm going to put it on the desktop. See, now it's right here on the desktop. So you got to go into configuration, add desktop entry, then you can find it here without having to run it in the command constantly. Um, now I've got PyCharm. Okay, so we got PyCharm. That didn't take too long. So instead of when this says, um, you know, do this, we named it this, you know, add and paste the following Python program, rdetector.py, into mousepad or the code editor of your choice. So it says the code editor of your choice. <clears throat> so we're going to, so it actually does tell you, like, put it in the code editor of your choice. And the and where you're gonna use PyCharm. PyCharm is way better. Um, uh, actually, Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio. Um, there's another one that's really good too, and I like it better than PyCharm. Um, 
it's not Visual Studio. Yeah, it's Visual Studio Code. And I should go through and just download that one too, but we're going to use PyCharm, doesn't matter. Now, copy and paste this ain't going to happen, right? Um, but, I mean, I can pause the video. Well, let me just type this in. So, um, we might like end this here. And, but we could do it. We could do it quick. So, I'm open up PyCharm. <laughs> From my desktop, and we're gonna say open project, and we're gonna go to PyCharm projects because this is where it's at, and we're gonna do ARP Detector Pi open, and it's that simple, right? And you can, you know, so now we're gonna come here. This is the Python sample script. Press Shift 10 to execute. Press Shift F10 to execute it. I already could run it up here. Man, we're gonna come in here and just delete all this crap. We don't need it, right? <clears throat> we're gonna open this, and I'm gonna start here. From, let me put my keyboard from, from Scappy because we have Scappy installed, right? Dot all import sniff. Okay, now if you look at this. See how that looks all nice? There's no squiggly lines. There's no stuff to tell you. So this is what. So if I go like this, if I put Scappy with the two Y's, and then I don't know why that didn't work, but it should tell me if something's wrong, right? Sniffed. Hmm. Maybe not. I don't know. Let me try to run this. So you press run. Man, maybe I was wrong. Man, Mark Pie. Hmm. Maybe I haven't used, I haven't written a script in a minute <laughs> so how can i copy and paste this i mean usually it's on the github it might be on github if you go through this book it'll probably give you like a github directory where you can get all this off of um but in the meantime let me pause this video because that's going to take a minute i'm going to type this in and then we'll go from there all right give me a second since you guys already know how to. All right, I'm back. So let's look at this instructions. I wrote the code and <clears throat> let's see what I did wrong because always got to be something wrong. So here's the code, and in PyCharm, when you write it, um, it'll tell you if you have any mistakes, but we're going to have to read this and see. It might work, might not work, but we're about to find out. So um, this is what the code looks like, right? We named it ARP detector, detector .py. I'm gonna run through this and tell you what it's doing. So, first of all, we imported some libraries, right? Port sniff library. 
from Scappy. That's why we downloaded Scappy. <clears throat> it's a sniffer. Okay. So definition process packet. So we're creating a method or function in Python. Uh, I forget what they call them, but in C sharp, their methods or functions. This one is literally a, a definition, right? And so we're setting up the source IP to be the art packet parsed or whatever. We're setting up the source Mac address to be on Ether. Now that might have to be Ether 1, but I think Ether is okay for now, but we're going to troubleshoot that. <clears throat> we're saying that if the source Mac in the IP Mac keys, um, and then if the Mac map source Mac is not the source IP, then it wants to try for the old IP and then accept the old IP unknown and then throw out a message. And now the message is a little bit longer, but I shortened it up. So I just said possible ARP attack detected because I didn't feel like doing everything else. Return It returns the message else the IP Mac source Mac equals the source IP. So it's setting it back the way it used to be at the end, right? We're gonna we're gonna go through and read this. <clears throat> now I have that set up, and I saved all. So you save all here. It saves it in this in the Python projects directory, which is cool. So we're gonna close that, and we're gonna follow the next instructions and see if this worked. If not, we have to troubleshoot the code. Okay. Now part of hacking is, uh, I would say, is learning how to program. Um, I think it's, I think it's important because how cool th this little exercise is, is that I am creating, um, a defense against ARP spoofing. Now I could take that code and uh, <clears throat> let's say I want to run that on my own box somewhere. I can run that in the background, right? This script. And if anybody is trying to do an ARP spoof thing, it'll tell me, right? Um, the, 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 the idea that this is, you know, what they're having us do is very cool for hackers, right? Cause you, you know, and then what I recommend is like, what I'm going to do with this code. Okay. With that little script is I'm going to keep that little script. Why not? Um, if I ever need it, I've got it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if I'm out and I'm like, hey, you know, don't I have an ARP spoof detector um, uh, application written in Python? You do. I do. And I'll have it in here, right? And and that's the whole point of, of having one of these uh, Kali boxes is that as we go on through this, um, we know that we have all these things we're writing and we're using we know that they work we know how they work if we can get them to work and we know we have them they're on our kelly box right <clears throat> and so if you ever need them you, you can go and use them you've got them you know what i'm saying you've, you and, and the more you practice writing um python or scripts the better you're gonna be at hacking okay that's all that's all i gotta say um um i i don't know I'm, I'm not a professional hacker. I don't, I don't, you know, but all I know is that um, learning Python and how, how to write scripts cannot hurt you. Okay. So that's why I'm, I've done this. Right. <clears throat> and so my background, I was a software engineer, so I, I can read the code. I can write, write Python code and scripting and stuff like that. So Let's figure it out, right? Let's figure it out together. So this one says, once you've installed Scappy and you import that, you know, copy this. We already did that. Okay, now we've already did this. Now the next step is the sniff function, number one, right here. In the Scappy library, takes several optional parameters. In this implementation, we use the count parameter to indicate the number of packets to sniff. 
A count value of zero means that the library should continuously sniff packets. That's why we put count zero there at the bottom. We also use the filter parameter, which specifies the type of packet to capture, which is ARP. We want to capture the ARP packets on the filter. Because we're interested in only ARP packets, we specify a filter value of ARP. Right? There it is. The, the store parameter indicates the number of packets to store. We set the parameter to zero because we don't want to waste memory by storing packets. So we don't want to waste this to zero. Lastly, the PRM parameter is a functional pointer that points to the function called whenever a packet is received. It takes a single parameter, which represents the received packets as an input. Okay. So now it wants us to run this. So it wants us to run this program, right? So we're going to go run that. And so I'm going to open back up my... And, and you know, it <clears throat> seems like it's running. So let's see. It, it might not be, but let's go here. We'll open up this. And no, not this. What we're going to do is, and this is the easier way for me. I'm going to open this and I'm going to go to my uh, pie ch I'm already in C Cali home. I'll go to my PyCharm projects, PyCharm projects, and here they are, right? So I'm going to go back, open up this directory in the terminal here. And now I'm in that terminal, right? That directory. So now, you know, I already know, I've already did this. So I, what you want to go is you want to do LS. And then there's my my program I want to I want to run right so I'm gonna press up because I've already done this so pseudo Python now you know the, the book says Python 3 but you can run it in Python 2 but I'm gonna I'm gonna put the Python 3 right arp detector.py and that runs the Python program so remember it's Python 3 arp detector.py is how you run it right so we're gonna run that it wants a code from my, my sudo Okay, it looks like it's running, right? So, oh no, something happened. Okay, so I'm getting errors, right? Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Okay, so I don't know what happened, but that's giving me some errors. But now what I'll do is I'm gonna close this and I'll just open up my Pi Charm. Oh, it's right here. And I can run this and I'll get the errors in here. So run. So, yeah, so I did this and it didn't have any errors. I, don't, I wonder what happened. Okay, so trace back most. So, so this is this is basically telling me there's something wrong with my program, and it tells you what lines it is. That's what's great about PyCharm. You're not gonna get that in uh, in Mousepad, I don't think, right? So, file projects PyCharms Dictor Py line 21. So line 21 is here. And module sniff okay, file python packet scappy in scappy it's getting some but the, I'm not worried about that it's scappy and scappy so it looks like it's this thing is a problem right so we're gonna go maybe try it right there I had it over here with the def it might have to be right there so we're gonna run. Okay, see, looks like I'm not getting any more errors. I don't know. Let's see. <clears throat> it executed. It, it shut off, right? But, but we don't know if that is normal. Okay, so we're gonna go back here. Open this back up with the here. And we're gonna run this again. Three. And I'll put this back in. Okay, so that closed, right? I ran and then closed, didn't even run. So it's doing the same thing in there. What does that say? Let's see. So the thing is, we're going to have to troubleshoot this code, right? And. 
I would think right here in these brackets, you want to put in your your IP. Oh, no, no, that's it. That's it. That's okay. That's your IP Mac map. Okay, never mind. So, this is probably not working. And we've already read this, right? Okay, as the program is running open, so it ran and then it closed. So, something is going on. I didn't do something right on it. So, I would have to troubleshoot this and it wants me to run that same ARP spoofing command okay so as the program is running let's say it ran open another Kali terminal and execute the ARP spoofing attack so then it would want me to run that ARP spoofing attack but I don't think that's gonna work because our uh, program's not running so <clears throat> that would be the value of doing this is the how cool that is um, getting this yeah so this is not let's close that one getting this uh, application to work I mean this script to work right and keeps exiting now I could debug through this um, but I don't remember how to debug through this I think I haven't used this in so long I don't remember how to debug through this but anyways you would want to debug through this and see what's making it crash um, I'm pretty sure this has to be here I don't see why that wouldn't be there and then this But it would not be there, would it? That would be there. Hold. See, I like to do this. Turn measures. Else. Anyways. That's the same. See, and everybody likes Python. I can't stand Python. Just because of this crap. You know, you can't. I mean, it's like. Oh, crap. Really? So I don't feel like debugging any code. Um, I'm not going to save that. <sighs> but I think I'll do another video on this um, <clears throat> did I 
mess this all up. Oh man, it saved it. I didn't even save all, man. That's ridiculous. <coughs> Anyways, I gotta go through this. And it's a small old baby script, and I couldn't even get that right. <coughs> but um, what you can do is at least you know. I think I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna make another video with the uh, with that, and I'll go through all the you know separate uh, programming and troubleshooting code and stuff but <clears throat> I mean that's kind of like a I would say going the extra mile when you're hacking I guess or if you're trying to learn how to hack this would be a little bit more advanced because there's a lot of well not, I mean I guess not for hackers but there's a lot of people that are in cybersecurity that know how to run the tools and all that stuff and they can't program so I mean it would be something that's cool to learn but we're gonna skip it right but at least you you got some idea that how to download PyCharm and <clears throat> you learned a little bit right and you learned about you know how to run the application um, this is a little more advanced because I really don't feel like sitting here for another 30 minutes trying to, you know, troubleshoot this code, getting it to run. Because I can and I will. It's not hard. This is a small script. Getting it to work, getting it to run, and then, you know, <clears throat> then and then just to ultimately see it go, oh, possible ARP, ARP attack. So we're going to skip that. <clears throat> so... On the next video, we'll do the exercises and, you know, here's another Python. So, I mean, you can set up an ARP spoofing top, you know, this is showing you how to write an ARP spoof Python program. Uh, which is awesome. <clears throat> then it tells you what, what you're doing, what you're writing. You know what I'm going to do? it To make it easier, I'm going to run through this book and find the GitHub that has this. And um, I'm sure it's somewhere in the middle here they'll finally give it to you but if you go to index <clears throat> yeah I gotta yeah this is gonna use a lot of Python -y. so I'm gonna get the github yeah see look Building Trojans. This is going to use. Man, this is a good book. Um, <clears throat> let's look for. I mean, it's gonna have GitHub, right? Because we already saw it. I want to see how many. Oh yeah, see here it is. But Well, let's go here. Here's your GitHub. If you don't know what GitHub is, Google it. It's a um, repository. You can put code. P. 
PCAP files. So this is the PCAP file. But if I go ethical hacking, book site, code chapter, code chapter. <clears throat> I think we're on. Oh, see, it doesn't give you anything for when well, yeah. ARP directory dot ARP detector dot pi. There it is. So you just copy this. Okay, we're gonna keep this on. Uh... Oh man, I'm in a VM. I forgot. Oh, we're learning today. You guys are going to learn the tricks today. I don't think this is going to work, but because I'm on a VM. Oh, bam! That actually did work. Bam! That actually worked. From my local box to my VM, uh, it usually doesn't work. Okay, so we copied that code, so that should work, right? Now let's run that. <clears throat> bom, bom, bom. So now we'll go to... Open terminal here. It's still going to have some problems. Watch. See, what was funny because I ran this when I first did it and it was doing that. It was just, it was running. It was just stuck on there. So. Must have did so. I had it right when I handwrote this, but you don't need to do that. But I mean, here's the thing: when you're when you're learning how to write code or or um, um, whatever, you need to learn how to type that in. Um, type that in, man. You'll learn better. Don't just copy and paste. A lot of people are copying and pasting scripts and all this shit, and they do that like in actual job too. Like people that that are coders <clears throat> or software engineers will just copy and paste stuff from from everywhere github you know and, and, and they're putting it on uh boards and stuff it, do not do that i mean you can do that sometimes but um if you're in a hurry but that doesn't teach you how to code and you're just doing yourself a you're doing yourself you know you're cheating yourself so type all that in learn what you're typing as you're doing it right that's how i believe i i don't know i don't know anything you know what i'm saying but all i know is i became a little a better troubleshooter in programming by typing in my own shit typing in my own code instead of just stealing everybody's code online creating my own code with my own creativity and my own mind and my own brain now if you don't even got time to do that i mean you can't you don't got time to do that okay so that looks like it's running okay and I'm going to open up another code. Uh, uh, let's uh, close this one. Now let's run that ARP spoof again and see if it pops up here, right? And if this works, it, it, it is really cool. So, okay. so I'm going to come here. And we're gonna run that one first. Oh, look, that shit works awesome. 
So there you go. I like when a plan works out. Um, possible art, art attack detective. So this little script is working, right? That they and like I said, um, you know, the, the, somebody's trying to do an art spoof. I'm trying to do it, but it's detecting on my uh, my box. It's detecting because I'm going backwards on this one right but um yeah so now it's closing that so cleaning up so control C is how you can clean that up did I do it on the other one yeah cleaning up our targets all right anyways so that's how you do that, right? Let's go back to here. This worked. This little script worked. Um, the easy, easiest way to do this, like I said, is to go, like, whenever you're doing these books, okay, I, I learned this. Um, oh, wait a minute. I didn't open that. Anyways, I'll leave this GitHub up. Um, the easiest way when you're doing these books they always have a GitHub re repository on here where they put their little scripts that they've written. Still their scripts. Now I have that script on my Cali box. It's in my PyCharm. So uh, that's my script now, right? And it's a free script. I mean, it's just showing you how it works. Um, I tried to handwrite this and the first time I did, it worked. And then I try to rerun it, and it was giving me those issues. I, I think I must have messed with something, but this looks exactly how I had it. I had the sniff, right? Um, except for this try. Maybe I didn't have the try over. Uh, oh, I don't think so, though. I think that's how it looked. But anyways, that's what we're going to do for the next videos. Is we're going to go to here, and we're going to pull this script, and we're going to run it. And... So, um... I'll leave that up, but, and I could have just, I could do it from my Cali box, but I'm able to copy and paste through my, uh, oh man, it froze through, um, I'm able to copy and paste through my, my desktop to my VM. So, um, it's, it's frozen. All right. So we did that. We learned a lot, I hope, um, especially if you're a beginner, um, kind of like I am. I, I mean, I'm doing all this stuff for the first. I mean, not for the first time. I've done all this before, but I'm I'm doing it. It feels like for the first time. <laughs> you know, I've done this a thousand times already. I don't you know, but it's okay. All right, let's go to. Uh, so we're, we're on chapter two. Right, right here. So we've done this. Now we're on. So detecting an ARP spoof attack. Remember, we're just going to start downloading those scripts. And my video ended again. So this is going to be a really long video again, too. But, I mean, you're learning a bunch. Let's recap on everything we everything we learned so when you're doing these books okay and you're trying to learn for yourself that's the whole part point of my video right is um they're not going to tell you um to, to go to ethical hacking dot github or whatever wherever that github is let me see if the github account is on it's, um oh man that's not the right one there it is. It's not, you know, they're not going to tell you to look up the GitHub ethical hacking book, right? Uh, GitHub. You, you have to, um, they're going to tell you that, not now, which is, I, I think is weird. Unless they told us reading, I wasn't slow enough in my reading. But, um, 
they're going to tell you like halfway through the book, hey, we got these. I don't know why that is. Maybe they want you to write the try to write the code yourself. I think that's janky. Um, I mean, it's cool, but what if people don't care about learning how to program, right? Because literally you can get these like, a, you know, you get these scripts off of the Internet and run them, right? You got to have to know how to run them and stuff. But I mean, I don't know. So that's what you got to do when you're running through these type of books. You gotta, you gotta kind of like that's a little golden little nugget is go you know go to the index and or whatever and like i did and search github right but you gotta know about github you don't know about github if you're first starting this but that's a little tip right there you know github is a, rep a repository for all kinds of stuff where you can put code your code you can create a github and you can put code in there that you created and stuff like that i've got a i think i've got a github i don't know Anyway, so we learned about GitHub. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to GitHub. We're gonna take these, make them easier when we're on room. This thing worked. It detected a spoof and then told me, our our spoof spoofing and then told me right. So it worked. Um, you learned how to download, I guess PyCharm if you know, um, because PyCharm I think is a lot better than the uh, mouse pad that they wanted us to use in this book and they say or a, con a code editor of your choice but if you're th that's why at the start of this book it says who's this book is for i didn't read it but i'm sure it says this book is for people that have experience already and that's not fair right but life is not fair so you know you can benefit from from my experience and all my reading and 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 learning how all this works and then you know and i'll make it easier for you guys to want to begin jumping this to this um because i think that's better you know a better way to learn is to is to have the answers for the most part and then learn how to troubleshoot things and learn how to figure it out yourself i mean i think that's more valuable than you know not telling you <laughs> and then because some people can't figure it out and they're like oh this is stupid like you could get hung up on so much stuff even if you you're good at what you you know what you do and you have knowledge like like writing this and you don't know about github let's say you don't who knows and you're writing this and you can't get that program to work and you're just like man i wanted to know if this worked that's cool you know you could get hung up in that and you're, you're not learning that and then you skip that and then how many times are you going to do that through this book a hundred times so you're you know so you basically you ain't learning nothing okay and so they're not telling you to go to github and, and download this unless they tell you here somewhere but i didn't read it <clears throat> but we did this and it worked right maybe it tells you right here in this exercise right but um next we're going to do this exercise okay in the next video this is a long video but I mean, it needed a lot of, I mean, this is what we're doing. I mean, we're going through this and we're learning, but you can't just go through it and accept everything that they're going to tell you in here, you know, like, you know, use the Mac, you know, use the MacBook, use the uh, <clears throat> notebook, mouse pad, you know, um, or the editor of choice. Maybe you don't know what editors to use, you know? You didn't know about PyCharm. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. Um, I had to figure that out myself. Download all that stuff because I was a software engineer before, so I kind of knew about it. But I had to figure all that out too, and then I had to watch a video how to remember how to download it again. So I mean, <laughs> anyways. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with using MousePad. That's the harder way. You learn how to write Python in in MousePad. Um, damn, that's even better, but I mean, you don't need to, man. Why suffer through that? You know, it's just ridiculous. And so, um, you know, we went through that and we downloaded that. Now, now uh, uh, theoretically, if you're following these videos and whatnot, you have, just like I do, you know, PyCharm already on there. And that's good for anything later. If you're going to go to school, if you're going to use this, you can use your, you can use this Cali box for anything, man. Um, I mean, invaluable. Okay, what we're doing here—it's just great for you know—gives you a, a leg up, 
when you're going to school or if, even if you don't want to go to school, it still gives you a leg up and or at least you'll be on par with people when they when they're you know talking about hacking or setting up a VM or do you know about PyCharm? Yeah, you know, I've done it and I download it, and, you know, you can help people or whatnot. Um, that's your nature, right? <clears throat> so that's that video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, I'll see you next time on uh, Hack the File.